Uh, hey, folks, good morning. And we're talking about uh, Solid Edge and uh, an idea called Start Parts or Smart Parts um, or Template Parts, uh, anything that you like. But what we're talking about are parts that uh, you're going to use over and over again. And it's good for any part or drawing or assembly, but you're going to reuse it in the future or in other projects. So if you're really proud of what you've done, you can say, gee, that's really good. I might use that somewhere else. If you come across that situation, uh, go ahead and save that off, give some intelligence to it, uh, intelligence to it, and then put it down to the on the template level so it can be used again. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, this is good for mature products with known parameters. If we say like a machine base, if we know it's four foot by three foot by two foot, uh, we know these parameters, we can go through that and set this up very quickly. There's no need to start from scratch. Also, if you have a list of, uh, of variables, it's a uh, six inch diameter with a one inch hole, or it's a eight inch with a two inch or whatever, uh, there's no need for you to go through all of that. Just set up a template and pull those up as needed. They're really simple to create and maintain. Uh, again, just need to probably, I would say, five minutes more after you create them to give them some intelligence so the next person knows what you have done. If you've been in the business long enough, you realize that uh, you may not know, you know, in a year's time, you may not know what you did a year ago. So, you know, give us some intelligence, you know, before you, before you move on. Uh, if you put them down in the template folder, they'll be very easy to retrieve and organize and, and maintain. So without too much more effort, let's go ahead and get this started. Now, out in the templates, uh, when you start with the templates, you see we have uh, part sheet metal and uh, drafting assembly. Now, before version 7, this was a little bit more of a trick. Now at uh, version 7 and version 8, uh, easy as pie. Uh, all I want to do is go down and edit my list for my template. And you see my ANSI inch, my ISO, my metrics, but I've got a folder called Smart Parts. And these parts are uh, just sitting out there just in the same folder structure as everything else is. This is where I keep my sort of frequently used type of stuff. Now I'm going to cancel this and just show you just where this is or uh, how some of these look. So I'm just going to go out to New. And I'll go to my smart parts, and I just want to show you what, what I've kind of got over the years. Um, this is a, 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 a track for an overhead crane. We've got the legs, the cross pieces, and the, and the, the side pieces. This is a, a, a 2D drawing of a sunroom. Uh, we change length, width, and height, and, and things like that. And we have the windows, the frame, and everything changing uh, as we do this. Uh, we have a cutter body. Uh, this and this uh, the 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 cathedral uh, sunroom and the cutter body are both uh, commercial products that are in use today. Uh, that the company, our customers need to actually type those up and fill them out. Uh, here's a ge here's a, a generic uh, turbine seal, and if you see this, uh, you see how you know complicated that is. You know, little teeth, big teeth, and all kinds of stuff like that. Well, you know. I don't want to create that again. It took a while to go figure that out. I don't want to create that. I want to keep that. On the other hand, here's something fairly simple, a manifold, a block of steel with holes and cross holes and pipe taps. You say, well, that's easy to make. Well, that's just the point. It's so easy to make, why not save it off and just pull it up and use it again? Here's a poltrusion die, again, for a regular company and a project, took some time. Uh, uh, stagger out all the holes, make sure everything's right, get the planes right, that type of stuff. But the point of it is, is having done it once, I saved it off, I don't need to do it again. Here's a round punch, another round punch that we have. Here's a 3D sunroom that drives off. This is just one single part. And you know, here's windows, skylights, and you know, we've dressed it up a little bit. We've got a welcome mat out there on the on the on the front porch. But the whole idea is that we can drive this model and make it what it we need to be. We don't need to start over and start from square one. Tanks, hats, conveyor sides. Here's another little sheet metal hat. So 
I'm going to go and just click on that sheet metal hat and start on that sheet metal and just to show you how easy this is. Now this is driven with a variable table. So if I'm out at home, uh, I will go to my tools and I'll go to my variables. Now you may see these and you're used to maybe you know V55s and V243s and things like that. Those are the variables and I've taken that and highlighted or I've uh, taken those and give, given those a name. If I were to do delete that, that'd be uh, V107 or 1017 and if I just hide, highlight that, GTH. Now also notice uh, when you're down here, when if you notice down here, this leg underscore two, that there's no spaces, no asterisks, no commas, you know, that type of thing in the name. So leg underscore two, uh, mounting underscore flanges, something like that. If you're going to give uh, two words, make sure you got the underscore setting right in there. But let's go work on that. And let's just say I want this piece 12 inches long. You see, it's going to go change. You see, I want this maybe three inches wide it's going to go change to three inches and I want the mounting flange to be one inch. I'm done. I'm basically done with this model. In three clicks, I've got this model exactly the way I want to. Uh, the gauge isn't going to change. If I want to change the gauge, I can change the gauge. If I want to add something to it, I can add something to it. Uh, let's go up here. Let's get a little bit of a height. You know, let's go up four inches. Um, maybe come over. Uh, take a simple uh, cut on the side, and I'll just pop off a, a rectangle here just for something. Uh, simple cut on the side, and it cuts all the way through, and now we can see that I've got a cut on both sides. I've got my part ready to go. So very, very quickly, it's something that we use all the time. I'm ready to go. I hit save, and I'm done. Now, I want to go over and look at another model just very quickly, and it's a couple, a little more complex, if you will, a little more involved. And I'm going to go ahead and edit that list, and I'm going to go to my smart parts, and I'm going to say OK. And now all my smart parts are out here. My manifolds, my sunrooms, and things like that are right out here on this front list. It's worth to note that Solid Edge. Uh, already has a couple of these smart parts involved anyway. And, and if I see this, let me cancel. If I see this real quickly, if I show you this real quickly, you can see that I have a sheet metal hood round to round, round to square, and square to square. These are already built in. You type in the radius of the of the round and the, the sides of the square and, and the height between the square and the and the round and you're going to you're going to get a, a sheet metal part that is going to work for you. So you don't have to in, reinvent those wheels. So again, uh, these are already here. You can contact us. We'll kind of show you where they're at. We'll show you how to move those around. But hood round to round, hood round to square, hood square to square. They're already there. I'm going to open this vented panel and just so you can see this panel very quickly now what I've done with this is again this is just one of those little annoying things that all I really need to do is cover something very very quickly I don't want to have to go figure this out I don't want to have to put a lot of effort into it so basically I'm going to do it once and then I'll be able to change it uh, as much as I want to so I can go to these tools and go to variables, or I can just simply right click, uh, right click out in the open area and just go to variables, just very quickly. And I want you to see this. What I've done is I wasn't so much concerned about the size of the panel in this case, just to be different. I'm concerned about the, the distance from the hole in the center of the hole to the hole. Uh, hence the name, holes center to center in the Y. And they're 20 inches. Now, the panel is been to has been told to grow past the center of those holes, right? So the, the height of that panel it includes the center of the center of the holes, and then you know, we add some on the outside you know, for the rest of the panel. So if I take this and just say 20, then I expect those holes to actually 
be 20 inches apart and then that panel to grow a little bit more. Where's that? Panel offset in the Y. Panel offset in the Y, I'll add, I'll make it one inch. It will be one inch bigger than, uh, the, than the center of the holes you know, on each side. So if I change this, we'll just go to 0.5. And I'll take the 2 inch, that was 2 inch, and I'll just change that to 0.5 and have that come in. Now don't forget, if you have some odd shape, go add 3 inches, add 4 inches, whatever, and then cut out that shape, right? We still got the center to the center of the holes, but we just got that extra material that we're going to cut out or bend over or do whatever that we want. We've got that setting right there. So again, here's my panel offset in the X and the Y, and I'll set this to half inch and make that. Now, where this idea of smart parts really starts to earn its, its money, earn its paycheck, if you will, is this idea here, is I can, uh, uh, it, in that uh, panel, I have put uh, a simple vent. And that little vent hole, that diamond-shaped hole, is three quarter inches wide by three quarter inches tall. So I want to focus down in on that just so you can see this really quickly. And I want to change this to say maybe it's only a half inch wide. I want you to see how that changes. And you notice how I've patterned them, and all of those are going to change as well. So a half inch wide, uh, and we'll go one inch tall. You can see how we can change all of that very, very quickly um, in, that, in that configuration. Now, the next thing we have is the number of the cutouts in the X and the Y. Again, if you've been around Solid Edge you know, a while, you understand that I can change anything I want. So maybe I want five and four, and I can have that arrangement already going for me there. It's a really cool idea. Well, let's take this idea and go just a little further. And what I want to do is work on uh, a, a sensor. Now, I've put a sensor out here. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with those, that's a design sensor that tells me, is this part fitting the need that I want? Is it too big, too small? Is it in line? Is it too heavy? Does it cost too much? Uh, that type of stuff. This sensor here. Uh, is telling me the negative area in this panel. It tells me how much air I can get through this panel. Now, I mean, that's a vented panel. That's why we have it. So we want to get air through it, and it's telling me right now, if you follow my cursor on the left-hand side, that I'm barely getting, you know, four and a half uh, square inches of open air space coming through there, and I really wanted 10. Okay, now I could, I could change it to anything that I like. But here's the point. As I look at this sensor and I go over and I say, well, you know, I'd like six and six, I can see that the number is changing. I almost got eight and a half square inches now just doing that. I think we're a little crowded on, on, on that. So I am on the pattern. So I'm going to come up to my vent wide and I might make it 0.625. I might change this size. And as I change this size, now I've got 10 and a half inches of uh, 10 and a half square inches of open area coming through there. So all this is possible. Think of this if you had to draw this again, set it up again, do it again, and then and then validate it again. Instead of I did it once, I know I can validate it. I'm going to bring it up in a template, and I'm going to do that. Now, the, now I'm going to run through the variables. So I'm happy with this, all right? I could, I could change. I could do whatever I wanted to. Now, to here we might add a flange or, or add some more holes you know, to mount the gauges and stuff like that on. But the point of it is, is this is set and ready to go. I'm, I'm, you know, I didn't have to start from scratch. It's all ready. Now, I'm going to save this, and just to show you this, what's going to happen, you know, we'll cut some, uh, I'll cut some sort of flange, or I'll put some sort of flange. I'll put a nice big flange here, okay, just so you can see this. So now I've got a flange coming around and we're ready to go. I'm going to go save this file.
I'm going to go save that file, and, and I'm going to close it. I'm going to come back out and open this vented panel, and I will get the exact one that I originally saved off. You see, no flange, no nothing. So I'm ready to go. These cannot be uh, so much overwritten, if you think about it. I need to go back down to that template, modify it down there, resave it over on that template folder. Uh, but any changes I make here does not affect the template. Uh, my template is always going to come up the same. So thinking of that idea of coming up the same, one more thing before uh, we, we close on this is the idea of a mature product. And so I want to take you over to this uh, cutter. This cutter body that I have, and I want to take this over there and, and just show you uh, how you can do this. Again, we'll go to tools, uh, I'll go over to variables, and I'll look at what we have. Now, inside the variable table, if I click on a variable, is a tool called a variable rule editor. And that just allows me to go and set my preferences. And on this inch and a half, I, I touch on it and I say variable rule editor. I'm going to limit its value to three quarter inch, one inch, an inch and a half. Maybe two, three, three and a half, three and a quarter. Who knows, but it's going to be have a discrete list. And I'm going to set that and allow it to be this way. So I want to come over here, and again, these are real-life scenarios. This is a real-life part uh, used by a company uh, that, that we have taught, and if you need help, we're more than happy to help teach. Uh, but the point of it is, is if I come over here and I say, well, I think I want a, a four-inch cutter, and I think I want it uh, six inches tall, now, as I do this, I can set my template over here or set my uh, bore. Is it three-quarter, one inch, or an inch and a half? Well, I think it's the one-inch brand. Maybe I look in the catalog. I can pull that up. And then I'm going to set the number of flutes, and let's say I'm going to set it to eight. So I'm going to set the number of flutes to eight, and then I'm going the percentage of turn. This is a quarter in or a quarter percentage of turn. So I'm going to go set this, and I've set these as well, and these are a min-max list. So I can't go below 0.20, and I can't go over uh, 0.33. I can have anything else I like, but you know, for whatever specifications that I've pretended to set, uh, these are going to stay you know, right there. So I may come over here and say a 0.33, and I'm going to have that twist of, on that part. I may come over here and say a 0.21, and I can have that twist come over there and change to the 0.21. But if I should say 0.15, I will get an error message uh, saying that this is this is uh, that value is not in my set of defined parameters. I can put it in there, but as I had said it, it's not in my set of parameters. When I had asked the company uh, that I made this for, uh, I said, well, I said, how, uh, how much time does this save you? And they said, two hours. And I went, oh, that's kind of bad. You know, it took me about an uh, hour and a half or so to you know, get all the information out of everybody and, and you, know, what, you know, what did you need and how did you need it and stuff like that. So it took me about an hour and a half to just kind of figure all that out, and it only saved him two hours. But then he says, no, 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 you don't understand. Two hours in order. And I said, oh, how many, hours, how many orders do you get a week? He says, 50. So you know, now we're starting to talk about some real time savings. So again, use these smart parts, these template pieces, uh, these seed parts, these start parts. You know, everybody calls them something different. I call them smart parts because one, it's a smart idea, and two, you know, we put some intelligence in it. When you make something, sort of, if you'd like, override the names, give it a meaningful name that's you or someone else can remember it. If you'd like to, take a value and something that you cannot, uh, uh, you know, to. Uh, set a discrete list that we like to use three-quarter, one inch, an inch and a half, and then 
Also, if you'd like, um, make a range of a list. So as I said here, and use this variable, I can only start with a point two or a point thirty three, and that allows me to set that back to whatever I like within and know that I'm safe within the company standards. I hope this helped. Uh, use smart parts. Uh, hardly ever, if you can avoid it, uh, do not start from square one and try to figure something out. Use what you need and work with it uh, from that from a, a known start off point. Hope this helps. Good designing. Give us a call. Uh, we're more than happy to help you at any time that you like. Thanks a lot. Okay.